you faced Mexico in qualifying uh, before, and you faced them in tournaments, right? Gold Cup, Nations League. Um, how much difference is there between the build-up and, and the home field atmosphere in a qualifier versus sort of the quick turnaround and neutral site feel of like a Gold Cup final? Does that change the game at all on the field? Does it change the way it feels or the way you prepare or the way it kind of plays out? I mean, in a way, yes. Obviously, being at home in a, in a pro U.S. crowd is definitely huge. Um, you know, the, the qualifier play against Mexico was in Azteca, so it was a different beast. Um, but like I said, I mean, um, you know, Nation League was great, Gold Cup was great, but being here in Cincinnati, it's an opportunity for us to, you know, play a tough side like Mexico and, and um, you know, get the result that we want. Um, home games are definitely imperative for us, and getting that win is definitely huge, um, you know, for this window. Um, and, but we just take it game by game. Next will be Sam Stasco from The Athletic. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Kellen. Um, Kellen, you went in the full 120 in, in both the Nations League final and the Gold Cup final this summer. It seemed like those matches, um, both of them kind of shared in common that they were really up and down, really fast paced, really emotional. Um, what did you take from those games? And what did you see from them kind of in the midfield? Do you think there was a lot of involvement for you guys on the ball and for Mexico? Or was it something where you're kind of locked in on duels and trying to get forward as, as quickly as possible? Yeah, I mean, like you said, I mean, it was a rivalry and it definitely showed in these two games. 120 minute games and game of details and um, yeah I mean obviously in the midfield it's a tough matchup of you know we get to guys like uh, Hector Herrera um, you had you know Edson Alvarez in there as well um, just name a couple of players and yeah it's a game of duels duels all over the field and I think the team that wins more duels will hopefully prevail and um, you know we had you know two great results in the summer but I mean um, Obviously, it was definitely great for our confidence-wise, but for being here in, in qualifiers is a different beast. Um, Mexico right now, I mean, they're number one um, on the table. And for us, it's another opportunity to, to showcase ourselves and build momentum uh, for, for qualifiers. And, and obviously, uh, you know, we want to be on top. So it's another opportunity um, to showcase our talents and our abilities and obviously um, gain a lot of confidence. Next, we'll go to Michael DeCourcy from Sporting News. Kellen, the, the two games uh, this summer were so different from one another, as well as the fact that you basically had almost entirely different rosters for the two. Was there any similarity that carried through those two games uh, from what you observed and what you participated in? Yeah, I mean, it's just games that, you know, you're going to need the full time. You're not winning the game in the first minute. And it showed that each game we played 120 minutes, but each game is uh, brings different obstacles and challenges. Um, you mentioned we had two different teams, but we're, with both teams, I mean, everyone was, was ready and willing. Um, and and it shows. And with this mixed group here, it, I mean, it was huge. And um, you know, Mexico is a strong side, and you know, for us, it's a, it's another opportunity to to showcase what we're all about, and um, you know, be on the top of the table of qualifiers. Next will be Daniel Nora from Univision. Thank you, Michael. Hi, Kelly, and thank you for your time. Uh, obviously, obviously, with this rivalry, we get the sense that uh, it's something more than three points for you guys and, and for Mexico, too. Uh, do you know how to play this game, and, and do you know how important it is to, to win against Mexico? How, how do you will explain that, besides the, the three points? Besides the three points, obviously it means a common yeah. rival. Um, you know, we've you know played a couple, them a couple of times this year, um, and it's it's a huge huge opportunity. And for us, you know, whenever you play against you know a team like Mexico, you, you always want the upper hand to get the win. Um, obviously, they they uh, we beat them twice this year, and and that's in the past. And now it's another opportunity. They're going to become guns blazing. I know they're going to want to come back at us, and it's an opportunity for us to you know you know kind of showcase you know, what we're doing here and obviously the three points is huge, but it's more so, you know, building that confidence and show the world and everyone. I mean, the U.S. is here and, and um, we're a top team. We'll go to Charles Bone from MLS Soccer. Hey, Kellen, thanks for speaking today. A question for you about Ricardo, who has is walking a road similar to, to the one that you walked. And I know your, yours ended up having some twists and turns, but you were once a young kind of phenom uh, getting thrust into the, the U.S.-Mexico spotlight. 
what do you see of, of Ricardo and how he's adapting to this this moment? And um, I don't know if you would, if you have or would give him advice, but if you were to, to be asked to do that, uh, maybe what would your perspective be given what you've lived? Yeah, I mean, R R Ricardo, I mean, he's great. Um, he's taken his opportunities really well. He's you know, showcased well in the MLS and then coming here with the national team, he's he's been great scoring a bunch of goals, being a force up front. And for him, I mean, just keep going and doing what he's doing. Um, I think he, he's a guy that's pretty level-headed um, despite, you know, everything going around around him. He's um, he's done a great job of, you know, being being confident and quiet, quietly being a, a quiet assassin on the field. And, um, you know, credit to him. Um, and it's just one of those games where he knows what's at stake. Um, and I think he, he, he's ready. He's ready for the task. And as a team, as a whole, we're, we're all ready for it. Next will be Ronald Blum from the Associated Press. Hey, Kellen, how do you balance the physicality expected of you in games like this and other qualifiers with not getting cards held up on you? Yeah, you, you just have to just go for it. Obviously, you don't want to get silly yellow cards, but the game needs it and it needs it. But you got to bring that physicality to the game, especially against a, a tough Mexican side. And, and for us, you, you can't really think too much about getting a yellow card. Obviously, we don't want red cards, um, but I mean, obviously, yellow cards are part of the game. But if we can minimize that as, as much as possible, it's huge. But you got to bring that physicality. We'll go to Bruce Schoenfeld from ESPN. Hey, Kellen, thanks so much for doing this. Uh, I want to ask you about another teammate, DeAndre Yedlin. You guys kind of came on the scene at about the exact same time in 2013. I've taken different paths. How has he evolved as a player in the, in the in watching him up close and from afar over those eight years? And secondarily, has he had any influence on you or have you had an influence on him over those years? I mean, I would hope so. I had an influence on him. But um, no, Dre's been tremendous. Um, I mean, you've seen from his days at Seattle to Tottenham, Newcastle, uh, Sunderland now in Galatasaray. I mean, he's kind of been all over. A guy that's, you know, knows the national team well, has, you know, I don't even know how many caps he's at now, but, um, you know, he, he's a veteran on the team. And vocally, I mean, he, he helps the young guys. And, um, you know, we, we, you know, came in at the same time. And, and to see, you know, him spring forward and, and getting the move to Europe and, and playing a World Cup, it's definitely inspiring. And, um, I mean, he's not only, you know, a great player, but he's also a great guy. Um, he, he definitely helps me and, you know, just mentally and that side, obviously building confidence and because confidence is huge um, at this level. Um, but yeah, D, D is, um, yeah, one of the best teammates on the team. And um, he's a guy that, you know, I'm, I've known for, for several years now and it is great to kind of just see, you know, um, how his career is shaped up and all that he's accomplished. To help Kellen out, DeAndre has 69 caps, the most 69. of any player on this U.S. roster. We'll go to Pat Brennan from the Cincinnati Inquirer. Cool. Thanks a lot, Michael. Kellen, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, great. Uh, just curious, because uh, you're just a couple days removed from a, a huge result in the league, and now you come into, uh, I think, fair to say, not just an, any U.S. men's national team camp because of, you know, not only is it World Cup qualifying, but the Mexico match in particular. Uh, what is that? Could you kind of just tell us what that transition is like going from a big result in the league on Monday, uh, on Sunday to uh, to now preparing for this vital qualifier? Yeah, I mean, that's just the nature of the game. You guys just switch gears. Obviously, it was great for us to, um, you know, get first in the West, and it, that was a huge accomplishment um, for, my, for my team and the, and the club. Um, but now, I mean, now I'm, I'm wearing the crest now, uh, and now it's, you know, just got in yesterday, training today, and it's looking forward to Mexico game, and we're taking it game by game, and it's a huge rivalry, and you got it. We have all our focus on this match, and um, we're not worried about the Jamaica game yet. Obviously, Friday comes first, and that's what we're preparing for. Well, take two more questions for Kellen, and start with Moises Linares. Hey, Kellen. Uh, we know this is a big game for both countries, U.S. and Mexico. We know that the level goes up to the roof when you guys play each other, but as a team, are there players on the other side that you look, you, that you see and you're like, hey, that, that guy's a baller. I like how that guy plays. Is there people on the other side you guys talk about that you admire? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, 
guys play at their respective clubs and they put in, you know, solid performances. Like guys that I've matched up with in the midfield, like Hector Herrera, and you have, um, you know, Tecatito playing at Porto and um, Edson Alvarez at Ajax, just to name a few. I mean, obviously those guys are, you know, top players for, for their national team and at their clubs and guys you got to be keen on that can change the game and that are influential for, for their team. And, and um, yeah, I mean, obviously you got you had Chucky as well. Um, but, yeah, I mean, obviously you guys got to, you know, have a look on. Um, they, you know, can change the game for them. And for us, I mean, we, we have guys, you know, just as good or, or even better. So, um, it, yeah, I mean, I think Mexico can say the same thing about us and as we can say the same thing as, about them. Last question goes to Ryan Talmich from Goal.com. Hey, Kellen. You know, when you look at the way that tournament soccer plays, obviously it's a different sort of mindset. You know, when you, you go into those finals against Mexico, you know you, you have to be ready for 120 minutes. You know, you might be a little bit more tentative. There might be a, a feeling out process that you don't necessarily get with a World Cup qualifier. So looking at this game, what sort of game do you expect? You know, you said you expect them to come out guns a blazing, but what do you kind of expect for them? Do you expect them to, to come out hot? Do you guys expect to come out hot? How do you kind of approach what this game will be played like? Yeah, I mean, it's a home game, so we're expecting to come out, you know, aggressive and being decisive as well. And I know they're going to try to match that intensity. Um, but, you know, being in a pro um, U.S. environment is definitely huge for us. And each home game is a game that has to be a must win. And we're going into that game with that mentality. And, um, you know, it's going to be a game that's going to be physical um, game of, you know, of inches and, and details. and. Sometimes the game doesn't go our way, and sometimes you you know you got to be able to adjust and to adapt. And we've shown we've shown that in in the previous matchups where you know the game was tough, but we we were able to to get through a weather storm and de definitely prevail. So whatever comes our way, we're going to be resilient. We're going to be able to adapt, and we're going to be ready.